Riesling injected in hot smoke suckling pig all over live fire. Yo, what's good? This is Chef David Olson with Live Fire Republic. And we've landed here in the great rustic and wild north of pure Michigan. We're in Cherry and Wine Country here in Traverse City on Old Mission Peninsula at the famed Chateau Grand Traverse. And here today, I'm gonna introduce you to a few of my very good friends. And together, we're throwing down the most incredible late Riesling wine injected suckling pig all over Live Fire. I promise, you don't wanna miss this. Let's go. The setup at our grill today is gonna to be complete indirect style of hot smoking. Let me tell you about that. But first, this grill in the Primo is unique in the way that it has a complete ability for direct searing and encrusting over the open flames. True two zone style of cooking using both indirect and direct simultaneously. And last but not least, our style of cooking today, we're gonna to lay down the ceramic deflector plates and hot smoke. Now what is hot smoking? We're going to be cooking above 275 degrees. We want to slowly prepare out the suckling pig, but we also want to develop a beautiful, rich and crisp skin across the exterior of that pig. So let me show you how we get this grill set up for the perfect hot smoke. Now to control temperature and smoke in a Primo ceramic grill, we're going to use the bottom and top vents. Let me show you how to do this. When we ignite the grill, we're gonna leave the bottom vent entirely wide open. This is gonna suck oxygen into the cooking chamber. And frankly, it's the fuel that we need to light that charcoal. The wider open our base is at the bottom, the hotter the grill will be throughout the course of the cook. But for a slow smoke like this, we're gonna close this up just under a one. We want temps settling between 275 degrees to 300 degrees throughout the course of this cook. Now, let's check out this top vent and how we control the smoke. Now, the top vent for me is all about the smoke profile in our cook. And there's two different features here on the Primo that allow us maximum control throughout the duration of our slow smoke. Check this out. We have our traditional vent that ranges from one at a close to five on wide open at a one we're cooking low and slow. At a five, we're wide open and lowering the amount of smoke profile. If we wanna to totally minimize the amount of smoke, we're gonna rip that flywheel wide open. For our cook today though, we're going closed and we're gonna go at right about a two. This is a hot smoke. Hot smoking is what's gonna allow us to prepare this suckling bag to total perfection. So what is suckling pig? Cochineo asado, as it's referred to in Spain, is attributed to the Segovia region of the country. 
It was most often served as a main course for guests of high honor and royalty and prepared best over live fire, much like we're doing here today. Now a pig like this is prized for its delicate, succulent texture and rich, flavorful meat. It's only fed on its mother's milk, is humanely harvested between two to six weeks, is brought to market at eight to 10 pounds. This bad boy is gonna require about 30 minutes per pound for a cook. Today, we're planning on a five hour hot smoke. Now to begin the prep process, we're gonna take our cleaver and chop through the rib cage. Check this out. Easy enough, and that's about the only amount of preparatory work we need with our knife for this cook. Now we're using a Spanish olive oil, which is traditional for a cook like this, and it's a bit sweeter normally than your Greek and Italian olive oils. Now we're gonna season first with our salt and pepper, and we're gonna go heavy. Remember, this is an eight to 10 pound animal not season lightly on this cook. Go heavy, be aggressive here. And 40% of this seasoning is gonna be lost to the grill grate, smoke, and the fire. Next in is brown sugar. And we're going with plenty of brown sugar for a cook like this. We're not preparing and smoking this hot enough where we're gonna create those acrid flavors of burned sugars throughout the course of the cook. These are gonna caramelize slowly and beautifully over the fire. Kosher salt, cracked black peppercorn, and roasted granulated garlic. And plenty of it. Now for our injection, we're going with a three to one combination of the late harvest Riesling to pork stock. We're including olive oil and garlic salt. This is gonna be the perfect combination to continue to baste this pig throughout the course of the cook. It's gonna be succulent and so ridiculously flavorful when it comes off the fire. All right, we're gonna go into the thighs, the legs. We're gonna get this beast all over. Fill this bad boy up. Go in each of the thighs. Ah, oh, there we go. Get it in there. All right, make sure we're getting into the ribs up top. Boom. Oh! <laughs> You gotta be careful around here. There we go. We're gonna go down the length, make sure we get into these loins back here. Now this wine with the pork stock and the garlic salt is really gonna brighten up the flavors of this suckling pig. It's gonna help us continue to baste the pig while it cooks. And this bad boy is gonna be juicy, tenderful, and so ridiculously flavorful.
Then we're gonna fold the pig over on its side and let's slide butcher twine underneath and around. And we're gonna use this to ensure this piggy is cooked evenly and the presentation is beautiful. Now we're gonna do a butcher's knot here, which I'm gonna go around once, twice, and thrice and pull tight. Now, cool part about this knot is that's simply all you need on its own, but we're gonna double knot it just to make sure. Now we're using butcher's twine to truss down this pig. We're using a butcher's knot once, twice, and three times around before the second knot. And if we do this right, we're gonna cook the pig more evenly. If we cook the pig more evenly, it's gonna take less time to cook. The pig's gonna come off the grill much more succulent and delicious. And the presentation is gonna be beautiful. Now that is a perfectly stuffed, seasoned, and trussed suckling pig. There's nothing left more to do at this juncture than drop the lid and let the Primo do what the Primo does, and that's hot smoke, incredible suckling pig. Now we're not gonna see this guy for another 90 minutes or so, and I've got something special for you. Let's go. I'm so darn excited to be out here with you both today, and I promise you all something extremely special. Uh, we're behind the scenes here with my very good friends, Eddie O'Keefe, second generation family owner here of Chateau Grand Traverse. My good buddy, Gabe Marzoni, director of marketing. You guys, this is awesome. Thank you so much for your hospitality, your warmth in having us here. We have an amazing cook going on, but we need to talk a little bit about wines, the Grand Traverse area, and certainly Chateau Grand Traverse. Well, wines go with well-cooked food, and we're looking forward to seeing what you create, but just like well-cooked food, you know, wine is all about where it's grown, how you grow it, and the quality of the fruit before you even make the wine. So we like to say that wine is made in the vineyard, not in the winery. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an absolutely breathtaking plot of land you have here at the vineyard. We just had a chance to see where the magic happens at the winery as well. Tell us a little bit about the history of uh, wine here in this region of Michigan and maybe more specifically about the role that your family's had here with this vineyard and winery here. Well, back in the early 70s, my dad really grew an interest in wanting to go in the wine business, and he really looked all over. He looked in Germany, he looked in California, Canada, New York State, and we would vacation up here in Traverse City, and he's going, you know, with all the research that I've done, this area seems to have all the characteristics of elevation, water, exposure, everything going on that I think you grow grapes up here. And in 74, my entrepreneurial father packed us up in the station wagon and we moved north and started Northern Michigan's first commercial winery. And uh, not just wine, but we planted exclusively European varietals, which are the same grapes that you see grown in Germany, France, yep. and elsewhere. And everybody right off the bat said, it won't work, it's gonna fail, it will never happen. And hence, next year is our 50th anniversary. Wow. And there are, I think, conceivably 40 wineries in the region now. And the, the region is well known for its high quality, especially the Rieslings, which we're gonna feature today, that are really crisp, bright, and just excellent uh, with food. Huh. Now, uh, <laughs> what I'm thinking here is we should probably get in and try some of these wines. Uh, so where should we start here on the table? Well, with, with most wines you should always try dry. Dry means no sugar. Sweet, obviously, is more sugar. So you should always taste from dry to sweet, and then, then, then you'll be able to taste it. If you try a really sweet wine and go back to a dry wine, it's very hard to taste. And so the first wine we're gonna try here, we're just gonna try a couple wines today, but sure. this, this is our dry Riesling. Um, to kind of put it into layman's terms, uh, I call this the Pilsner of, of white wines because it's so dry, crisp, and revealing that you can't mask imperfection in this because with no sweetness or anything like that, the wine has to speak for itself. So it's right. going to be very crisp, very sharp, and uh, just an excellent uh, summer type wine to go with fish, pork, whatever you want to do. Cheers. Cheers, Jens. So when you taste, you smell, and bring in a little bit of air. <laughs> Bright, lemony, crisp, almost stainless oh, steel. You're totally right. Yeah. 
you get that crispness and it just rolls back across yeah. that palate and you do get those really nice fresh notes. So if you were to have like even like some brie cheese or something like that it has a little bit of fat to it yeah this just kind of cuts right through it well i do like this because for cooks that we're doing where you have uh more of a fattiness per se and some of those smokes i could totally see this the acidity in here just cutting right through this is just one of my favorite wines i just think that um this is classic of what we produce in northern michigan yeah it's, this is indicative to me this is a classic traverse city northwestern michigan Chateau Grand Traverse Riesling wine. I mean, this yeah. is incredible. Wow, this is amazing. Now, Gabe, what are your thoughts on this? It's dry. Certainly, it's going to appeal to the customer that particularly is looking for a dry wine, absolutely. But it definitely has the fruity characteristics of the Riesling grape without any of the residual sugar. Well, and to me, the drier Riesling, to me, that's a, that's a summer Riesling. Yeah. And here in Michigan, we're filming right now in August. There couldn't be a more perfect wine for a day like this. Absolutely. Well, if we're working in, quote unquote, the drier to the sweeter, what comes next? Well, we, we do make a semi-dry style and we make an off-dry style, but I just thought I would take it to the other end of the spectrum and do something which is called our late harvest Riesling. And the late harvest, excuse me, got to clean yeah. the glass yeah, here. Yeah, please do. No wine left behind. Chief empty, glass emptier. <laughs> so, so the late harvest Riesling is a little bit different. The dry Riesling is where you harvest the grapes Ferment it. Fermentation is where the yeast eats the sugar and produces a byproduct of alcohol. And when it's done, it's very dry, very sharp tasting. This is our late harvest Riesling, which is on the other end of the spectrum from the dry that we just tried. This is where we leave the grapes on the vine till the very end of harvest, usually late October. And we will pick them while they're fully ripe, press them into juice, and then we'll ferment them like the other wine, but we will stop fermentation a little bit early leaving uh, a certain level of sweetness in it. And then we will go back and even add more of our Riesling juice that we didn't ferment to sweeten it up even more. So it's all the natural sweetness wow. of the fruit and it will be much more mouth filling. And, and this is the wine to go with suckling pig in my opinion. Okay. God, that's it's so good and it's sweeter i mean you can tell I me mean, same grape same vineyard produced the same exact year and to me this is the exact reason that we chose this wine that late harvest riesling has that just that sweetness it totally coats the palate and it's perfect for the suckling pig that's roasting away while we're enjoying the uh well yeah. frankly the the fruit of your labor ah there you go <laughs> One of the cool things about the Chateau Grand Traverse Late Harvest Riesling is it really is a flagship item of our entire collection. This one's been around for 50 years and people know the brand because they're fans of this wine. It doesn't have the sugar taste of sugar sweet, yeah, yeah. it has that great Riesling sweet taste. I had a question for you, David. Um, when it comes to what you're doing in the vineyard with the suckling pig, would you rather see a dry Riesling or a late harvest Riesling as the injection wine? Well, what I really like about the late harvest Riesling was the sweetness, right? So when I think about pork, there's a salinity to pork, uh, just very naturally, right? And we're also using kosher salt, black peppercorn, roasted garlic, which brings out a lot of that natural flavor. Uh, flavor. And what I like about the Riesling is that sweetness is there to cut through. And we're using it both in the injection, but we're caramelizing the sugars mm of that late harvest Riesling as we continue to baste the pork as it cooks. So we're gonna develop this really neat caramelized flavor around the exterior of the suckling pig uh, as it slow smokes. To me, uh, while both of these are beautiful, the late harvest Riesling couldn't be a better choice for I think the smoke that we're doing out here today. I can't wait. Well, guys, this has been a treat. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Gabe, you're so awesome in coordinating this time that we have out here today. I'm so grateful for you inviting us out here and eddie to join us man i know how busy you are chief bottle washer chief yeah. guy in the vineyard uh and you guys have been so monumental in all seriousness for uh the community that's been developed here and the culture here of wine in this area it's just been an awesome day to be out here with you your family uh and everyone here at chateau grand Traverse. so thank you so much love to have you okay. here cheers cheers, cheers my friend
Yo, if you've enjoyed this episode as much as we've loved taking you on the adventure, do a couple things for me. Smash that subscribe, hit the like, leave us a comment down below. Let us know about your very favorite vineyard and winery experience. Send some love over to our friends at Chateau Grand Traverse and Primo Ceramic Grills for all these recipes and more. Get at us at livefirerepublic.com. Until then, the time for talk is over. Let's eat. <laughs> Look at the color on that suckling pig. We're in the fourth quarter right now in this cook. Internal temps are registering 175 degrees. We're gonna rip open the intake vent, dial up temps in the grill to about 400 degrees to crisp the skin of that pig. We're looking for 190 as a finishing temp. At that juncture, we're gonna have a small rest and then it's time to feast. Gabe Eddie, it's true, man. I mean, you light a fire, you put some wine in folks' hands. I mean, just people get together around here, don't they? A gathering happens. A, ga a gathering just happens like that, doesn't it? It does. Well, man, I'm so stoked. This bad boy looks incredible. Why do you say we uh, we carve it up and uh, and dig in? Let's pork take. Let's pork take. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been thinking about that? He's been thinking about that the whole filming. Like, how do we close this? All right, I got it. I got it. Here we go. Well, we're going to start uh, by getting rid of the trussing is what we'll do. Because uh, frankly, no one likes that much fiber in their dinner, right? Is that true? Okay. All right, here we go. Carefully remove off. And then we're going to go in. Now, the traditional method for a suckling pig is they literally carve it with like a plate to show how tender it is but I figure that uh, we have incredibly sharp knives, so why let them go to waste, right? Yes. Okay, all right, so let's go in. Uh, and if we did our job well enough, look at that, peels right off. How tender is that? Gabe, can you hold my hand real quick, please? Thank you. <laughs> there we go, man. All right, dig in. Here we go, and look at this. How juicy is that? Are you kidding me? Does that look amazing? It looks amazing. Whoa. Look at this. You guys ready? Check this out. Look how juicy this is. You ready? Ready? Oh. Oh, that's extra. You got to pay extra for that. You got to pay extra for that. That is, oh, I don't want to be dripping on the dog. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. All right, let's go in. So we're going to carve around the edge here. We'll just bring that knife in right around that shoulder blade. And let's just get this bad boy lifted right off. Whoa. Down goes the lemon. Down goes the lemon. There we go. Work your way right around in that joint. Suckling pig wings, Eddie. Suckling pig wings. Look at this. Look how juicy and tender that pork is. Isn't that amazing? And that's all that olive oil. That's the pork stock. We did an injection in. Look at me. Yeah, get him fed. What does he think? <laughs> oh, Betsy Lane. Like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there we go. Carving up. What do you think, man? It was all late harvest reasoning. That's all I tasted. Wait, you already ate it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I know. Gabe was over there getting quiet. I'm like, I look over and he's elbow deep. There we go. All right, carve off. Can you hold my hand for me a second? There you go, buddy. Just hold my hand. Thank you so much. There we go. There we go. Look, just rip that right off. Get in there. Oh, I gotta curve my way around that scapula. Ready? Here we go. Look how juicy that is. Got it? And look at that. Look how tender that is. And to me, this is what cooking over open fire is all about, but that's the primo taking it to a whole nother level. 
That ceramic grill just maintains the heat so beautifully through the entirety of that cook. Dig in, I'm gonna carve this up. Whoa, man. You can, you can taste the Riesling in there. You get the, you, oh, it's so amazing. But then we were smoking it over oak and you totally get that oak smoke so rolling over back. Smoky, salty, sweet. Smoky, it's salty, sweet. That is everything you should love about pork. Get in here, come on, dive in. I'm gonna carve up for everyone. Here we go. Uh, who's next? <laughs> yeah, right. This is the this is the money bite right here. So if you guys don't know, the best bites on pork is the neck, the collar, and cheek. The cheek. The cheek. I must, I must try the cheek. Eddie, come on in, man. Oof. I'll share the cheek. I just want to try the cheek. Look, that's what we're getting into right here. So I'm just gonna reach in. I'm just gonna pop that cheek meat out. There we go. There we go. Four legs, two cheeks. How succulent is that? Isn't that incredible? I don't think I've, I don't, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen five people share one leg of pork before. I mean, it's, it's really, ins it's inspiring. It's inspiring. I'm starting a new uh, tradition. <laughs> I know. It's a fall tradition in Northern Michigan to pass the pork. There we go. So this is what we're looking for right in here. We come in, we're looking to pull out just that cheek meat and it literally just pops right out. This to me, it's a small bite, but this is the most tender, succulent bite in the entirety of the pig. Ah. Yes, yes sir. Now let's see if we can do this. So this is the equivalent of the back strap on a venison. There we go, there we go. And I'm just gonna take that right down from the middle of that spine and... Oh, that, was, that was pretty. Look at that. And look here, Alex, look at this. Oh my God. Dude, I'm not even kidding right now. That might be the best bite of pork I've ever had. Seriously, I'm not. That was a little late harvest right there. There's no moisture left. Oh, oh, oh. See what you did there. Thank you. Check that out. Isn't it good? They're, they're partially kind of dry. But that late harvest though too, I mean to your point, it just, it totally cuts through. Uh, Eddie, here, check this out. There you go. Here, my friend, check this out. That's the back strap, the equivalent of back strap venison. Mm, you gotta try that. I know, I asked for the pass you eat. Couldn't you try the back strap? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Come on over. Here, Kate. Isn't that awesome? You want a little bite? Oh, I do. Just a little bite. Okay. I'll, I'll just get together and get or whatever I'll say. There you go. Okay, who else? You guys want to bite of the. Who want, Casey? Casey, come here, man. What do you think? That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. This has been Riesling injected in hot smoked suckling pig all over live fire. Stay hungry. Could I ask you a question for the camera about yeah. the difference between a dry wine and a sweet wine as the injection? Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that a thing? I can, I don't Do know if care? I'm gonna be able to answer it. <laughs> if untrust, and we'll use the cut that we had that sounded semi-decent. In the prep process for a cook like this, we're gonna take our chop cleaver. Three, two, one. 